It's June 30th, 2024, and 409 of Smash Ultimate's best competitors have traveled out to Florida's biggest fighting game tournament of the year, CEO. As the bracket made its way to its final two, we were left with a pair of competitors all too familiar with this iconic ring. In this corner, we had a top 10 competitor making grand finals for his third consecutive year, and in this corner was the focal point of this story, a competitor that through the past decade has risen from a local threat to a globally ranked phenomenon, and finally to a major champion. But to truly understand how our protagonist got here, and why this is even important in the first place, we need to take you back. Way back. Uh, no, nope, not there, not there. Oh, stop, stop. Yep, uh, a little further back. Okay, we're good. Thank you to my friends over at Into the AM for sponsoring today's video. If you followed me on the channel for a bit, you probably know by now that Into the AM is my most represented sponsor, and I think it's for a pretty good reason. Aside from the fact that they've been willing to support me for such a long time, they have genuinely nice clothes, and I honestly would have been wearing them all the time even if I wasn't sponsored. In fact, I actually found this brand at some point before they reached out for a sponsorship and owned a few pieces of their clothing myself, and a lot of their OG products were sweet. I had read a few comments in the past from folks who were a little bummed that they no longer had some of those products, and I'm really stoked to let you know that some of Into the AM's best-selling products are back up and in stock. Between graphic and vintage tees and their newer relaxed button-ups, there's really a great variety for you if you want to change up your fashion a bit. And if you use my code WALT to check out or go to intotheam.com slash WALT, you'll get 10% off your order, and that's on top of whatever other sale they may have going on right now. Once again, that's an affiliate link, so I'll get a small commission if you place an order with that link, so thanks. Thanks again to Into the AM for supporting the channel, and I hope you enjoy today's video. In mid-2015, the iconic Georgia Regional Momocon was back for its fifth iteration and for the first time ever had the recently released Smash 4 in its lineup of games. This game was at the peak of its popularity and brought the strongest competitors from around the state, many of whom had already proven themselves on a national stage. This was absolutely a debut tournament for many of the players in attendance, including a young competitor named Salt One, or as you all probably know him now, Cola, that began to make his lasting impact upon the competitive scene. At that time, Cola was only 12 years old, but his experience was far above the average player his age. Playing day in and out with both friends and on for glory, Cola was able to hone his skills and quickly began to play at an exceptional level with his main Captain Falcon. The Smash scene was still kinda small at that point, including the network of events through Twitter, Discord, and StartGG, which at the time were all in their infant stages, so finding events was close to impossible for newer players. Thanks to one of Cola's friends, though, he found out about this event and Momocon officially became his first mark on the community. Out of the 250 entrants there, Cola finished that event at an impressive 13th place. In the process, he got to play his favorite player and the best Captain Falcon in Smash 4 history, Fatality. Being that they were both from Georgia, this would be the first of many sets the two would eventually have, and, well, this one was not good. It lasted for less than two minutes of actual in-game time, so... Yeah, it was a tough loss, sure, but it did show Cola the potential that not only his character, but this game had if you truly pushed yourself. Cola's grind continued through the following years of Smash 4's competitive lifespan. He began attending local tournaments the week following Momocon, which would mark the beginning of Salt 1's eventual rise. Through 2016 and 2017, he swapped through Captain Falcon, Mario, and eventually landed on Cloud. With his newfound main, the stack pool of locals players in Georgia, and his commitment to the online grind, Salt One became a name to watch out for among the Smash community. For many, the path of improvement is for the sake of rising up the rankings or getting a high placement at big events, but for some that are dedicated enough, there is an even bigger goal, and that's Major Champion. For the Southeast in particular, the major to be at was CEO. Based in Florida, CEO had hosted not just Smash, but a variety of fighting games in the past, and had become a staple event in the FGC. Smash slowly became incorporated, with Melee taking its first primetime spot back in 2014, but Smash 4 was when we truly saw a title in the series begin to make its market seat. CEO. With Cola being from Georgia and CEO over in Florida, it was always an accessible major for him and the one he had his sights set on. And on July 28, 2016, Cola revealed what his true goal in Smash was. A little naive, perhaps, but that was the trajectory Cola was going on. Cola was determined to get that CEO championship belt, but he knew he was a bit far from that at the moment, so the grind continued. He began to pick up big-time names on players across North America in different online sub-tournaments or qualifying events, earning him the status as one of the strongest players online and one of Smash's strongest and most prominent rising young stars. This status as a Wi-Fi legend seemed to overshadow his own major results at times, though. 
Coca-Cola made his first CEO appearance at the 2017 edition of the series. He managed to place his projected 65th, losing to the pair of top 50 threats from Florida and Rio and Myron. Nothing too crazy, but it was clear to anyone that watched him play that Cola was an extremely talented competitor. He knew that that belt was all he wanted, and to claim it, he was going to need to play his heart out. And if you ever watch Cola, you know that this dude has guts for sure. A year passed and we were in 2018, and Cola still hadn't had that true breakout performance outside of his local scene. The top 50 wins were there, sure, but consistency was not. He was underperforming at majors like Frostbite 2018 and didn't make too much noise at the other majors he did attend. By placements, he did technically bounce back with a 17th at Momocon a few months later, but this was a run with zero ranked wins at an event with mostly threats from the Southeast. Great placement, but it still felt a little empty. At this point, Smash 4 was nearing the end of its life cycle, but with Ultimate around the corner, there was a burst of enthusiasm making its way through the community. This led many of Smash 4's best to one of North America's last majors, the A-plus tier event, CEO 2018. The vision was still clear, CEO Championship Belt. This event started for Cola in pools, beating top Luigi Gerard KB to make it into winner's finals of the pool, then matching against the number nine seed and future teammate of his, Light. Light was also on the come up around this time, recently becoming ranked, and you add this status along with both of them being generally aggressive players, and this was looking to be one of the best sets of the entire tournament. Light's Fox was able to take the win on game one on Battlefield pretty convincingly, and in game two, Cola flipped the script. Fox is extremely strong on Battlefield because of its platform layout and mid-size length, but on a large stage with platforms that aren't static, Fox's juggling just isn't as effective. This allowed Cola to capitalize, taking both of Light's stocks out of his own juggle situations. Light looked to have it on lock in Game 3. After taking Cola's first stock, he set him up on the ledge, taking his jump, and had him in an awkward spot. The cloud was seemingly dead, but Cola capitalized on a major mistake by Light, regaining stage control and spiking Light's recovery. Now at a tied game. After trading strings back and forth, Cola caught a full hop out of shield from Light with a limit up B, which didn't quite kill, but on the way back down, he cleaned up that stock, hitting a meaty dash attack on a landing air dodge. In a 2-1 victory, Salt One upset Light in one of the biggest wins of the event, but his run didn't stop there. His next set was a loss to Brawl veteran Vinny and his Sheik, who had cleaned up the inexperienced Salt One 2-0. In loser, Salt One was able to pick up one more win against another top box player and one of California's best up-and-coming players, Charlie DeKing, 2-1. One. He ended up falling to fellow Georgia player Sonito, concluding his tournament run here at 25th place. Unfortunately for Cola, this was his last chance in Smash 4 to get that CEO win he had hoped for. The years of grinding didn't pan out for that young competitor, but that didn't set him back. It was actually fuel to the fire, and once again, Cola had only one thing on his mind still winning that CEO. In the following months, we saw Smash 4 end and Ultimate release with a huge response from the community. Just like many of the other players who were on the rise during Smash 4's ending months, Cola came out the gate swinging like a madman. With a trio of Cloud, Snake, and Roy, Cola was winning a majority of his locals in Georgia. This was over top threats, by the way, like Wrath, Fatality, Scat, and Mugen. But of course, his real target was set on the Southeast Premier Major yet again, and his time would quickly come. Just seven months after Ultimate's release, we were once again at CEO for 2019's edition, and this would be Cola's highest seeding going into one of these yet, projected at 36th. Cola would go on to outplace this seed, finishing at 33rd with wins over Enki and Anti, but he knew he was capable of so much more. Once again, Cola got back up. He was able to stem motivation, not disappointment from this event. In the meantime, Cola started to show that potential as he moved up from a regional threat to a legit top 50 level player, getting placements like 13th out of over 2,700 at SmashCon 2019 and 9th out of over 1,000 at the Big House 9, all following that CEO 2019. This streak of rather solid placements landed him at number 46 on the fall 2019 PGR, solidifying his stance in the metagame as one of the best young talents in the game. Near the end of that year, the CEO team would announce the the return of an event meant to capitalize on the peaking popularity of Smash Ultimate, CEO Dreamland. Taking place in March of 2020, Dreamland might have been a Smash exclusive event, but the stakes were just as high. For Cola, this was another shot at the title he was chasing so intently. But unbeknownst to everyone in attendance, this wouldn't just be the 8th seed's best major run yet, but his best shot at the crown so far. CEO Dreamland started out pretty calmly for Cola, beating a pair of veteran competitors Seabrick and Siegel Joe to match up against ZD in the Top 24 qualifier. And for anyone who doesn't remember, ZD was actually quite the threat in the early days of Ultimate. In fact, he went on to get third at this event, and Cola was an instrumental piece in that run, falling to his Fox 3-1. ZD continued that run through the winner side while Cola was now subject to the warpath that was loser's bracket. His first encounter in top 24 was Kuro, a top 3 zero suit Samus in the world at that time and a player that 
that had won a Japanese major just six months before this event. This wasn't their first time playing each other either, technically. They had played a total of three sets against each other in doubles of this event, so it's fair to say each player had a bit of an idea of what the other might have been looking for. Each of the five games of this set went down to last stock, and it truly could have gone either way, but in the final moments of the set, it seemed that Kuro had Kola checkmated offstage. All he had to do was complete this edge guard, but he missed, and Kola capitalized, killing him off the reversal and emphatically taking the set in a 3-2. In his next set, he would get a 3-0 win over Capitan Sito, which placed him in a top 8 qualifier against none other than Central Florida legend and a player that would go on to have quite the rich history against Kola in Kobe. With Goblin, the other top Roy at this time also being from CFL, it was almost certain that Kobe would have more experience against this character than the other way around. Kobe would start off this set with not just a dominant Game 1 win, but a mood-changing Game 2, putting Cola's back up against the wall. Up until this point, Cola had stuck primarily to Roy, but his Snake and Cloud were both options for that potential counterpick. After racking his brain for a bit, Cola decided to make the switch back to his Smash 4 main, Cloud. It took a second to get heated up, but Cola adapted, making the changes necessary to get a game and put himself on the board. Kobe made the switch off of his young Link to regular Link, but this was no issue for Cola either. He did perform marginally better, but in the end, it was Cola that secured the game four and brought it to a deciding game five. The slow pace of this game was exemplified in both of these players' incredible neutral game. The way they both weaved in and out of their varying pressure points was impeccable, especially considering how long the game had been out for that point. Cola took the first stock at an extremely high percent, but his ability to maneuver around the stage was too much for Kobe to handle. After managing to take another stock, it was clear that Kobe was too far behind at this point. Cola might have gone down 0-2 to the young Link, but he made the adjustments necessary and cleaned up the set with a cross slash edge guard, securing his top 8 spot and the closest he had ever been to his first CEO title. And his run wasn't over either. He beat another Central Florida resident, Epic Gabriel, 3-0, then followed that with a 3-1 win over Japan's highest placing rep in Gact. Cola was playing absolutely out of his mind, and this looked like his moment. His loser semis match was against the Genesis champion and one of the players gunning for the number one spot in the world at that time, Mars. As the first seed of this event, you may be surprised to hear that he was in the loser's bracket in the first place, but he was actually fresh off of a nine-set loser's run following being upset in pools by Player 1's Diddy. This set started with Mars doing Mars things, nearly going up three stocks to one over Cola, but after a great up smash reversal, Cola was back in it and with rage now. He pulled off a great conversion that eventually ended with a perfectly timed bear off ledge to now put Cola up an entire stock against the top zero suit. The game ended in SD for Mars, but Cola replicated this result in Game 2, beating Mars with a 1-stock. Going up 2-0 against the top 5 player in North America was one thing, but Mars was not going to let that one slide. Game 3 was a 2-stock, and Game 4 started with that same level of ferocity for Mars, but Cola wanted it just as bad, if not more. It was a last stock effort from the Roy, but unfortunately he came up short, locking in yet another Game 5. And once again, the gameplay slowed down, with Cola remaining significantly more grounded to try to avoid ZSS's plethora of anti-airs. Mars attempted to link Nair to flip kick, but he just missed out, allowing Cola to jump in position and get the punish, taking the stock and starting the flip of momentum. A big string from Cola ended with a fast landing on the platform to an immediate up tilt to kill off the top, now three stocks to one. Mars did get a stock, but Cola's momentum could not be stopped. He ended up finishing Mars with a two stock and sent the Genesis 7 champion home, setting up for a rematch against ZD. And uh, I guess I kind of spoiled this, but remember how we mentioned ZD and how he got third? Well, yeah, Cola won this one too. Cola was now in grand finals against the second seed of the event and the number two ranked player in the world at that time, Samsora. His Peach had managed to work his way through the rest of the bracket up until this point, and unfortunately for Cola, he just didn't have what it took to be at the end of that dominance. Cola did manage a game two win with Cloud, but the set eventually concluded three to one, with Cola giving all three of his characters a shot here. But with all of that being said, this was Cola's best performance yet. Cola had never even made it to top 16, yet alone a grand finals of a CEO event. He was so close to that goal of holding up the CEO belt, and yet again, someone else took the spotlight. This remained as motivation for Cola once again, but surely that motivation was soon to peter out. Unfortunately for everyone, the following months would be a series of unfortunate events on a global scale, shutting down Smash tournaments entirely. This was a stumbling moment for a lot of players, a killer of motivation, if you will. To be confined to Wi-Fi practice alone was a breaking point for some. 
As online became the main medium of practice, many so-called Wi-Fi warriors got the opportunity to clash with the best players from around the world that previously strayed away from these kinds of events. We did get to see glimpses of future major finals when we had the likes of MKLeo and Tweak against rising stars like Spargo and Sonics. But the name that sat on top wasn't any of these players, actually. It was Cola. In the first half of 2020, Cola dug into his Wi-Fi Warrior roots and managed to snag the number one spot on the Wi-Fi Warrior rankings v5 over players like the aforementioned Four, DeBuzz, Meister, Esam, and more. The following season, he secured a number seven rank before slowly falling off of the online tournament grind, preparing for the return of offline events. If the results from online didn't make his rise eminent enough, what Cola was about to do next was going to send shockwaves around the entire community. Community. 2021 was the revival of Smash Ultimate. Not only were the good players back and getting better than ever before, but new players were rising from fringe high level to absolute world-class talents. The tournament scene also improved as well. Summit was as popular as ever, and because of the Smash World Tour, Smash now had a circuit of events both online and offline, something we had never seen before in Ultimate. All of this good news put Cola into another gear. Upon Locals returning, Cola would go nearly undefeated for months and still actively participated in online tournaments too. Sticking almost solely to Roy, he qualified for the Smash World Tour through the NA East Regional Finals. He was clearly one of the strongest players in the US, but that didn't mean he was above the inconsistencies that come with competition. He had a rather disappointing 65th at Riptide, a few 17ths here and there, and then amazing peaks like 5th at SmashCon Fall Fest, 3rd at Glitch 8.5, and 9th at Main Stage to make up for it. This led to a sponsorship offer from Moist Critical on a funny little team he was thinking about starting called Moist Esports. Cola accepted and became the first member of the organization on August 11th, 2021, and he did not disappoint. His mind was on the Smash World Tour, sure, but taking place just two weeks prior was an event he was gunning for just as hard, if not harder. CEO 2021. Like we mentioned before, because of the fact that it took place two weeks before Smash World Tour, a lot of the highest seeds ended up dropping out of this event. This left the initially fourth seeded Cola as the highest standing seated player that actually attended the event. Close to two years prior, Cola made the run of his life to make it into Grand Finals, and now he was technically projected to make it there. But that wouldn't mean this bracket came with no threats. Cola made it through round one pools without dropping a game and wound up facing Ling's Daisy in a top 24 qualifier. Ling had come fresh off an upset against Sonics, yeah, that one, and was looking to try to add another win to this run. Playing Cloud in all three games of the set, Cola managed to win this one and continue along to winner's quarterfinals. His next opponent, Wadi, fell 2-0, and for the first time in his Smash career, Cola made it to winner's side top 8 at a CEO event. Yeah, once again, he had his grand finals run at Dreamland, but that was through the loser's bracket. This time, Cola was on top of the competition and looking as strong as ever. He even had an extra set to play around with. But what did Kobe say that one time? Something about the job's not finished? Well, as it turns out, the true battle was just about to start. Cola's next opponent was a Florida native and someone also looking to claim the title and pride that comes along with it, Mutace. The two had matched off twice previously in Ultimate's lifespan, trading 3-0s with each other, but the 16th seeded Mutace was on quite a run up until this point in bracket, posing a real challenge for Cola. Sure, Cola had beaten Ling, the United States' second best Peach earlier in the bracket, but he was forced onto Cloud, a character he hadn't been playing at all at this event outside of that singular set. The set with Mute started with the aforementioned Cloud vs. Peach matchup, and all three games followed the same formula. A phenomenal start from both players, Mute taking the first stock and extending the lead with his incredible punish game, then Cola somehow bringing it back to one stock before finally getting closed out. Even an emergency switch to Roy in Game 3 was just not fast enough to stop the bleeding. It was hard fought, sure, but just like that, Mute had 3 0'd our protagonist and sent him down into the shark tank that was the loser's bracket. In Loser's Quarters, Cola beat Zamba, who wasn't the biggest star at the time, but was a quickly rising one, and he even managed an 8-set Loser's run to make it there in the first place. Zamba took the first game of this set, but that would be the only one he would get, clocking in Cola's ticket to Loser's Semis against Fatality. And six years prior, Cola could not hold a candle to Fatality in a tournament environment. But in 2021, things were much different. Cola had a six-set winning streak against the Falcon coming into this event, and it was CEO after all, so you know Cola had to show out. Cola continued that dominant win rate against the Captain Falcon with a 3-0, guaranteeing his spot in Loser's Finals. And on the other side of bracket, it ended up being Gluttony vs. Mute Ace in Winner's Finals. Mute cut it close in the first game, landing with a back air while pressuring Gluttony, but this would be his only game win. The next three games were definitely close, but Gluttony's ability to adapt showed as he slowly began to get more and more comfortable as the games went on. 
With the 1-3 finish, Mudes was now in losers finals, which meant a rematch against Cola. In their winner's side set, Cola's Roy played fine despite losing in the end, but his cloud truly looked like it could be the answer. There was just one issue though, he was uncomfortable. Despite managing to match Mudes in neutral, his cloud just seemed a bit too impatient and uncoordinated at times. Cola was capable of holding Mudes at the ledge for long periods of time, but he couldn't make impactful plays down the stretch, especially with Limit on. So in the end, he decided against Cloud here and started the set as Roy. Unfortunately for Cola though, this wasn't the change of pace he needed. He lost a little bit worse than he had in winners and was once again left with the decision, Roy or Cloud? After a moment of thought, the decision was finally made, and it was back to Cloud. Game 2 started with over 100% of uncontested damage from Cola, and he managed to take the first stock. The occasional impatience was costing him some stocks still, sure, but after managing to stuff out a potential comeback, the set was now tied at 1-1. One one. For this matchup in particular, Cloud not only has more range than Roy, but he's also slightly faster, has a better variety of kill options, recovery mix-ups, and the almighty Klim Hazard out of shield, giving him the ability to punish Mute's pressure and cross-ups in ways not possible with Roy. Games 3 and 4 were statements from either player. In Game 3, Cola managed to take the first stock and took Mute's next at just 54%, but Mute Ace would still find a way to squeeze out a victory and put the set count in his favor once again. In Game 4, we saw Cola take the lead for another time, but rather than his normal swing now, ask questions later play style, he decided to sit back and wait. This is where Cloud excels in the matchup compared to Roy. Between the combination of bigger hitboxes, blade beam, and limit charge, Cloud has the ability to force an approach from the opponent when he has a lead. Against Peach in particular, these tools work amazingly together. Peach has a low run speed, and her main movement mix-up in float can be countered by Cloud's disjointed hitboxes. It seems like Cole has cracked the code, right? Well, he capitalized on this as he went up 3 stocks to 1 on Mutase and finished the game with a 2 stock. We're now in a Game 5 situation. And that Game 5 was everything you could have asked for from a set like this. From start to finish, at nearly every point of the game, these two competitors were neck and neck. They were living to impossibly high percentages, Mute found the first kill, but Cola was able to strike back with an up smash read. Cola then slashed Mute with a bear off stage to take his second stock and began to build up some extra credit. In the final moments of the game, both players were well over 100%, two of the most clutch players in North America fighting for their tournament bracket life and a shot at holding the prestigious title of CEO champ. Mudes cut it close, for sure, but in the end it was Cola that was swinging for the kill and Mudes that was just trying his hardest to survive. Cola's attempt scarcely missed until he finally caught a jump from ledge, killing Mudes and winning the set. And so now, we're in Grand Finals. The stage was set. Two opponents that had never faced off in bracket, considered to be some of the most explosive players on the planet, and both gunning for their first major win. This would be a volatile set, to say the least. Fresh off the win against Mudes, Cola was playing hot, taking not just the first stock, but eventually going up three stocks to one over Gluttony in the first game of the set. Gluto got one and a bit of percentage on Cola's next, but he just saw this as free rage and a quicker way to kill Wario, sealing this game out with a jab back air and a two stock. In game two, it seemed like Gluto's adaptation was once again paying off for him, getting a nice opening to start the game, but once again, after missing an edge guard attempt, Gluto put himself in the corner and ended up dying at 106% off of a Roy jab back air at ledge. Cola's Roy was moving even more precisely than his Cloud was, and he was not giving Gluto a break to breathe. With Cola at 0 and Gluto at 160 on their last stocks, surely Cola would be able to find a way to close out this game, right? Well, Gluto hit a ridiculous string, footstooling Cola offstage and dropping Waft right on his head, making a comeback and tying up the set. Game 3 was a monumental shift in Cola's mentality for the rest of the event. Ludo didn't just carry that momentum over from the previous game, it seemed like he was already fully in motion barreling towards Cola. He took the first stock and followed it with a percentage lead. Cola didn't let this one slide, and once again we were in the last stock situation where it was Cola this time, able to find the kill in the end, taking the game and now popping off. This set was not even close to over. Cola might have gotten his confidence back, but that didn't mean Gluto lost his. And Game 4 was proof of that as he managed to take the game with the JV, bringing us to Game 5 once again. The year prior, Cola had already been out of the bracket by the fourth game of Grand Finals, and now he had the chance to reset the bracket as well as get a real shot at becoming a CEO champion. It was time to lock in. Gluto got a single stock off of a ledge trap, but Cola came back down, attacked Gluto again, and finished the game with a jab back air, resetting the bracket. He managed to stay composed this time and restrained himself from popping off though. The job's not finished. 
he still needed to win three more games before he could hold up that CEO belt, and against a player of the caliber of Glutiny, that was not going to be an easy task to accomplish. But with the crowd on his side, the adrenaline rushing through him, and the spirit that comes with being the final Southeast representative in the Southeast bracket, Cola started set two with a statement, you are not beating me. He dominated in advantage, almost never overextending while constantly exerting pressure, especially on the ledge. Cola not only weaved around Gluto's attempts to trap him in this position, but whenever he had Gluto there, he took full advantage. He took all three of Glutiny's stocks at or near the ledge, cleanly winning game one. Game two had the same ferocity from Cola, with the crowd cheering his name as he took Gluto's first stock. For the rest of this game, it felt like no matter what Glutiny tried, it failed. He tried to run, and Cola always caught him. He tried to approach, and Cola whiff punished him like a task bot. Cola was hitting him with custom combos, relentless pressure, and world-class reads like the one he made to close this second game with yet another two-stock. As the game loaded up to start, Cola got out of his seat and hyped up the crowd. He was absolutely feeling himself. Game 3 was close to start, but an up-tilt callout put Cola up 3 stocks to 2. In response, Cola taunted Glutiny, then got hit with the classic taunt to get bodied, putting us back at 0% each. Glutiny punished an unspaced F-tilt from Cola and sealed out that stock with an up-tilt into waft out of a roll read, his first waft since that miraculous comeback in Game 2. With Gluto now up by a considerable amount, Cola made a desperate attempt at equalizing the stocks with a counter, but it failed, all but sealing his fate and putting Glutiny on the board in set 2. But with almost zero hesitation, these players immediately ran it back to Pokemon Stadium for the ninth time this set. And it wasn't a good look to start for Cola. Gluto is known to be a player prone to making a comeback, and his hot start into this fourth game was showing. Some players might have been nervous to challenge him at this level, but Cola had ice in his veins. He forward threw Gluto onto the platform, then read the roll-in for the up smash to seal the first stock of game four. Cola had over 100% in rage, and against a floaty character like Wario, that means his combo game was going to be even stronger and kill even earlier. He racked up 86% in extra credit before Gluto took the stock in reply with a sneaky edge guard. Cola respawned and continued to run Gluto down, now leaving the Wario down to his final stock, one KO away from winning CEO. Glutiny came back ready to fight. With his waft online, he just needed to play a solid enough game to take Cola's next stock without dying, then get a waft conversion, something he's done thousands of times before. Cole's approaches began to become more and more risky as his urge to win and adrenaline continued to stampede through him. And like clockwork, Gluto converted a forward throw into edge guard, and these two were now at one stock apiece with the waft still online. Gluto got the crowd nervous with a signature nair string, but Cola managed to avoid the reset from Glutiny, which would have been certain death. These two continued to make exchanges until they were both well over 100%. Cola found an opening which put Glutiny on the platform, and understanding the strength of Rage Roy, Gluto attempted to make a move jumping over Cola and trying to land a back air. He just barely mistimed it, by mere frames going right over Cola's head, allowing Cola's own back air to sneak in and close out the stock. Cola had not only won his first Smash Bros. Major ever, but he finally accomplished the goal that naive 14-year-old Falcon Mane had back in 2016, become a CEO champion. In the process, he cemented himself as one of North America's best players, as well as one of the best ultimate players of all time. Oh, the kid drove down from, from Georgia to Florida. He took it down. He's got his Georgia friends around him, Mugen. Everybody else is in there. He's loving it, man. I love to see it. Let's go, Cola Bebe. That's so amazing. The whole time, you saw the adrenaline. He's been yes. shaking. He's still shaking. Oh, absolutely amazing. What a set between these two competitors. Obviously, on the other side, too, you got Guto. Fantastic. I mean, you can't say enough good things about him as a competitor. Absolutely tore it up in the winner's bracket. And Met Cola, who's stopping it, too. We might have to get some Moist Esports boots going here because he's going to wear. Cola would finish 2021 as one of the best players in the world, getting fifth at the Smash World Tour to end his year, and his trajectory in 2022 remained rather steady. He did come up short at the first major of the year, Let's Make Big Moves 2022, coming in at just second place overall to Quid, but in the process, Cola managed to win 12 sets in his loser's run following being upset by Choco Taco's Lucas and even reset the bracket. He unfortunately just ran out of steam at the end. Cola ended up being ranked number eight on the PGRU V3 North American ranking that covered the first half of the year, and then number 13 on alt rank, which covered the back half of the year. He also went down as one of the first players to ever take a set over a Cola, then the number two player in the world. However, Cola did decide against going to CEO in 2022 to defend the belt, and this would remain true in the following year as well. There began to manifest a common trend for Cola in 2022 though. If you've ever watched the player cams in any sets against Snake, Steve, and the main culprit, Kazuya, you'd likely see Cola getting very, and I mean very angry. 
That rage can be great for an explosive competitor like Cola to get himself hyped up and going, sure, but against these characters in particular, it requires a lot of precision and waiting for the perfect moment to strike. These consistent feelings towards something that's supposed to be fun are also just not that healthy, so Cola decided to take a step back and for about half of 2023 went completely MIA from the competitive scene. These feelings and lack of major attendance in the year led him from top 8-ing nearly every tournament he stepped foot in the previous year to only picking up two in the entirety of 2023. The field was catching up, sure, but it was clear that Cola's focus began to shift onto other things. It wasn't until around Battle of BC5 and Momocon that we saw Cola's return, the latter of which he was DQ'd out of in Losers, and once again, he disappeared. This time, it was a four-month departure, and for a third of the year, we had radio silence. He eventually came on the Lights Out podcast to announce his return to events and why he had been gone. These past, I don't know when the fuck I stopped going to tournaments, but I think it was Momocon. These past uh, three months have been very interesting. I'm gonna try to be <laughs> quiet because my parents are downstairs, but... Today, I lost $61,000. Okay, so TLDR, I realized that Smash is not gonna pay uh, my bills. And even though I'm very passionate about it, um, honestly, like the past, since I was 12, I've been entering tournaments and I felt like I kind of needed a break, honestly. So I decided to take a break. But since like November, I've been trying to get into new side hustles, you know, to pay the bills and shit. And I've been doing pretty good. You know, for me to lose 60K, I would have had to gotten to the number that allows me to lose 60K. So I'm, I've been doing something right. And the good news, I don't know if I said the good news, but um, please, I need to I'm hear gonna be, <laughs> I'm going to be going back to tournaments in like December or November. Man, that sounds like more bad news, honestly. Entering <laughs> tournaments in the state of this game. I'm yeah, sorry, Roy's bro. Shit, you're right. Because Roy is a fucking horrible character. Cola was beginning to grind the game again and made his grand return at Luminosity Makes Moves Miami 2023. The 21st seed reminded the competition why he's considered the king of the Southeast, going on a huge run, beating players like WebJP and Zamba, and even going to Game 5 with the eventual champion in Spargo. A follow up ninth place at Poor Priority was confirmation that he easily had what it took to compete at the highest level, but a back-to-back -back underperformance to end his year left Cola's spot among 2024's best players as uncertain as it probably had ever been. Many players had been taking a step back or even calling it quits entirely due to the current competitive landscape, but Cola really had no reason to quit. He was still sponsored, a crowd favorite at events, and more importantly, he still had something to prove, that he could still be a CEO champion. Cola decided that 2024 would be his redemption year for the series. He was coming back for that CEO championship belt. Leading up to 2024's installment was a series of peaks and valleys for Cola, generally placing around his seed with a few outliers like a 25th at Cirque du CFL 3, losing to J Mafia and Anathema, or his 4th place at Collision the following weekend, where he beat MKLeo, Light, and Mutes. Cola has always found a way to take what seemed to be the most he could give and push it just a little bit further at CEO though. And in a game like Smash Ultimate, that little push is all you need sometimes. So now, it's June 28th, 2024, and we're in Daytona Beach, Florida, and for the first time since winning back in 2021, Cola has come to reclaim his title as a CEO champion. The competition at this event was slowly dwindling through the years, but the grand finalists from the previous year, DeBuzz and Riddles, along with a lot of other strong players from Florida and beyond, still brought together a tough B plus tier bracket. Riddles in particular was going to be a hard matchup for Cola if they ended up playing. They hadn't played in two years, but like I mentioned previously, Kazuya is easily one of Cola's least favorite characters and one of Roy's hardest matchups. He had even lost to an up and coming Kazuya main Wilds just a month prior at Momocon, so this potential encounter was quite worrisome. As the third seed coming into this event, Cola's run through round one pools went about as you would expect other than a 2-1 finish against Florida Ken main Nave. This was especially surprising given all of Cola's experience experience against the character from Jazo. But in round two pools, he started by beating Arsenic's Joker 3-1 and secured yet another 3-1 victory, this time over MVD. MVD had upset Cola 3-2 in their last encounter at Collision 2023, so this was a big win for Cola and it propelled him into winner's quarters against his fellow Moist teammate and top Roy main, Goblin. Goblin and Cola had also had quite a history with one another, but it had been a very one-sided history. Cola was up 5-0 on Goblin coming into this set, and in their previous two encounters, 
he didn't drop a single game. Goblin is of course a strong competitor and he put up a good fight with Cola, but in the end he just didn't have the gas to keep up with Cola's never-ending engine. The game ended with a 3-0 and a handshake, and once again Cola was in winner's side top 8 of CEO. Cola's next opponent in DeBuzz was another that he had a long history against in Smash Ultimate. Cola had won the last 8 sets against DeBuzz, and that's a record that spanned over quite a few years. But a set against DeBuzz is never an easy one, especially in this year. DeBuzz was the reigning champion of CEO, having overcome the now number 1 seed Riddles in the year prior. Given that he's known for being one of the most well-studied and seasoned competitors in Smash, DeBuzz is always going to have a great idea of what his opponent and their character are going to want to do, but he didn't have it in him in this set. Game 1 was a last stock, last hit effort from DeBuzz, but at these high percentages, we begin to see Roy's advantage state in the matchup. Rosalina's lightweight makes her very susceptible to dying, especially to trades, and Roy is a master at putting on this kind of pressure. By getting to essentially mash on DeBuzz's shield for free, Cola was able to take the first game. This was surely a confidence boost, and while Game 2 started in a similar fashion for Cola, he managed to close it out with a much more confident one stock. The roles were reversed in Game 3, though. It was a close game between the first two stocks, but as it came down to the final one, DeBuzz had led over 100%. But this was arguably a better situation for Cola, though, as he had max rage against a character as light as Rosalina. But in the end, DeGoat was able to find an up smash and get a number on his scoreboard. In Game 4, we saw a close bout to start the match, but in the end, it was a dash in F tilt that caught DeBuzz attempting to grab the ledge. A 3 to 1 win, and Cola was now in winner's finals. Now, on the other side of top 8 was Riddles and Beast Mode Paul, the former of which took the set in his own 3 to 1, where both players managed to 3 stock each other and one of the many janky matchups Smash Ultimate has to offer. This result meant that Cola's next opponent was going to be his biggest threat at this event and the number 1 seed, Riddles. Ranked top 10 in the previous two years, Riddle's year up until this point, just like Cola's, had been really solid for his own standards. Riddle's hadn't missed out on a single top 16, and at his last major, he managed to outplace his seed for a third place overall. Add this to the fact of, well, Kazuya, and it was fair to say that this was going to be quite the challenge for Cola. Roy's issues in this matchup were apparent almost immediately upon the opening of the first game. Cola was forced to close the space in an attempt to get off his strongest hits, but after whiffing an aerial directly in front of a shielded Riddles, he took an uncontested 114%. But despite Roy's need to close the distance and get into Kazuya's threat range, that's also where Roy gets a majority of his work done. With his superior movement and frame data, Cola was able to put the pieces together for a Game 1 win. Game 2 started with that same motif from Cola, outpace and outmaneuver Riddles, but he just couldn't find his footing on Hollow Bastion. Unable to convert at the level he did in the first game, Riddles took advantage of these additional chances at playing neutral and ran Cola through the blender. He took the first stock off of a lead trap, then hit an electric into side B in the corner to trade with Cola, putting him at a significant lead. This game ended in a two stock and a disruption of Cola's momentum. In game three, we saw them go to town and city, a much bigger stage that gives Cola not just more space to move around, but it also helps him push his horizontal advantage, which had been doing so much work for him in the first game. Now having to constantly chase Cola around, Riddles was incapable of getting any significant combos off, resulting in a taste of his own medicine from the previous game, a two-stock in favor of Cola. Now on his tournament life, Riddles brought it back to where he's most comfortable, the single platform stages this time opting for Smashville. In the same vein as the ending of Game 2, Riddle started the game with a zero to death in the corner, going up an entire stock to start out the game. This was already looking like it was going to be an easy Game 5 for Riddles, but Cola locked in. He caught Riddles with a dare as he was recovering, and while he was still at a deficit, he had a world-class advantage state. Like clockwork, Cola struck back, not just getting back into the lead, but taking Riddles' next stock before losing his own. With both players on final stock, Riddles once again had Cola offstage, seemingly checkmating him after forcing him to recover low, but he was a bit too slow, and Cola took advantage. He crossed Riddles up, covering his landing with an F-tilt. Riddles attempted to punish, dash grabbing out of shield, and Cola preemptively buffered a dash back then reacted to the whiff grab, be reversing a double-edged dance to kill Riddles and win the set. With a 3-1 victory, Cola had guaranteed his spot in Grand Finals of CEO 2024. Now, the loser side path could have gone in any direction given the talent pool that was still in the bracket. DeBuzz was easily the favorite, but it actually ended up being Beast Mode Paul that would get his chance against Riddles once again. Riddles, in a dominant fashion this time, handed out a three pack of two stocks to the hero as he eliminated him from the bracket at third place. And now, for one final clash, we had Riddles, who for the third year in a row was in grand finals of a CEO, coming from the loser side of the bracket. Opposing him was, of course, Cola, who was once again coming for the title and glory that is associated with being a CEO champion. It was hard to say who wanted this one more. Both players had something to prove, but both players had one simple question to answer. 
can you do it? Riddle's defense was looking nearly impenetrable. Between his sharp parries and preemptive evasions, he destroyed Kola in the first two games, two stocking him back to back. Adjustments were made by Kola, sure, winning the following two games and disrupting Riddle's momentum, but in the fifth, Riddle's once again asserted his dominance with another two stock. After two years apart, these competitors had traded sets and were now in the true grand finals. And as bad as Kola's losses in those three games did look, it was an extremely volatile matchup for Roy, and he knew that if a few interactions went in his favor, it would have been a completely different story. Now is his time to prove it. Game 1 started with the Riddle's lead, taking Kola's stock with one of Kazuya's best tools in the matchup, Hell's Gate, sending Roy at a terrible angle and resulting in a kill, but Kola came back swinging. He not only regained the lead, but he ended the game with a JV2. In Game 2, Kola had to pop out and show Riddles that he wasn't going to let up at all. He managed to slip out of a confirm and then proceeded to edgeguard Kazuya to death. This was just the start as Kola linked together a nair train across the stage, down through Riddles at the ledge, read the air dodge, and killed him with a down air at just 60%. Riddles took one back, but that one ended in a 2 stock and now a 2-0 lead for Kola. On the Smashville counterpick, Riddles turned it up. Once again, those single platform stages proving to be very effective for Kazuya, especially in this type of matchup. As Riddle took the first stock and was putting together what was going to be a 3 stock to 1 lead, Kola found a kill in response and put himself back into the game. Rather than playing scared, he doubled down on holding forward, and it was paying off. Piece by piece, Kola knocked down the lead from Riddles until he was eventually in the lead. But despite bringing it back so close, Kola was caught with a rage drive and deleted from Smashville, and this brought us to Game 4. This Game 4 was easily one of the most evenly matched starts we had seen yet. They had traded their own conversions back and forth with Riddles finding the first, but Kola making quick work to put it back to an even game. It was at this point where things started to become scary for Kola. Riddles got off a quick electric loop, turning around and throwing Kola off stage in that aforementioned terrible angle, and he converted on the edge guard, now being up an entire stock against Kola. That lead had been melted away in the previous game, sure, but it was set two of grand finals now. Kola couldn't have had it in him, right? Well, no, the opposite actually. He'd not just put together an amazing stock to equalize the game, but the last stock was a complete massacre. Here we go once again. The oh, upper down throw. Starting off. Frame six on the nair. Standing up up here though on the covers. Godfist. Ooh. What are we doing on this platform? You better get the heck out of here. Yo, the Venn diagram, man. Right. <laughs> no, facts, bro. Falling up here. He said, I'm jumping with you. I'm everywhere you don't want me to be. Oh, oh the time! Bro, man, moves! And Cola wins CEO! This is what a CEO champion looks like. 2024! Your CEO champion, Cola! The well deserved pop off, the F Talk smash to him, on baby. three! Talk Ooh. to him, yo! Yo, my man, fuck it up the camera! Given the entrance and the level of talent, especially given the years prior at this series, I think a lot of people wouldn't have expected much out of this CEO, especially when it comes to telling a compelling story. But instead, what we got was a clash of two of the best in North America, facing off for the first time in years and one of the most exciting grand finals of the season. On top of it all, it was yet another milestone in Cola's Smash Ultimate journey. Eight years ago, when Cola made that first tweet, he would have been called naive and unrealistic even if he had the audience to back him up. Cola not only showed that he could be the face of a CEO champion, but he proved that he deserved to be one. For the viewers at home, this is a reminder of where hard work and passion can bring you. As they say, the greatest challenges yield the greatest rewards. Hey, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, it would really mean a lot to me if you subscribed to the channel. We are on our way to 20,000 subscribers here, and I think that'd be a really cool milestone to hit by the end of the year. This was also, of course, a very, very, very long video, so that subscription also helps us kind of know that we're headed in the right direction. So thank you again. Thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring us, and we'll see you next time.